Peter, uh, great analysis you had on the economy. I um, hope you can convince some of the senators that the solution to the problem is what you said it is. Um, the other thing, uh, besides the concern of the people today about Obamacare and the Gulf oil spill, one of the major concerns, which is a big concern in Arizona, is the illegal alien problem. What would you do about that? I could say that the illegal aliens are costing the United States over one trillion a year. There's supposedly between 11 and 14 billion, uh, million in the country today. If they give them am amnesty, not well, only will they be here, but all of their relatives, etc. By the year. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in amnesty, but I can tell you something. If we continue on this path, the, Im the illegal immigration problem will be solved on its own because they're all going to leave, looking for jobs. In fact, Americans are going to leave. It's, it's, it's Mexico that's going to start to worry about all the Americans coming south of us. So if we stay on this path, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you, that problem is going to solve itself. But what we really want to do, as far as my policy, I want to turn off the welfare state magnet. I don't want people coming to this country because they want to get on some kind of government program. I'm, I'm, I, I want people coming here like my grandparents did. I want them coming here to work and succeed and contribute because we benefit from that. I don't want people coming here to go on the dole. And that's the fault of these programs that make it so enticing for people to come here. So that, that what needs to stop. And I have said, too, that I want to bring home troops from 160 countries where we don't need them. And if we do that, you know, we'll have some extra troops to patrol our borders to make sure that people are not crossing it. Can I mention one thing? Uh, Rob Simmons said Americans won't work for to uh, wash dishes in a restaurant. That's a lie, I, though. I said, but the guy who runs the restaurant doesn't want to pay the market rate for an American to take that job. So, therefore, he has an illegal immigrant doing that job for seven, eight, six dollars an hour. Well, you don't have to be illegal. An American can still work. But, see, a lot of the illegal immigrants maybe are working under the table. Yeah. There could be Americans. But, you know what, why would an American wash dishes when they can go on unemployment for two years? Yeah, but what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying, I mean, yeah. if we take away all those unemployment benefits, they'll yeah. wash those dishes. That's true. Mm -hmm. But that, they could only collect unemployment if they had a prior job. Yeah, and well. What I said to him was, if you have an 18-year-old kid and you posted a sign there, eight dollars an hour or eight fifty, whatever the minimum wages, to wash dishes and nobody applied, you have to increase that to get more people to yeah, apply for the job. So my point is, the owner of the restaurant, who has an illegal alien there, who, is, who they are paying six dollars an hour, is in violation of the law and decreasing our living standards. The government should come in and take that yeah. restaurant, take his assets, just like a drug dealer. And if they well, did that, you would not have. No, what would actually pay. happen? What would actually happen is if they had to pay higher wages, they just would shut down, no, or they wouldn't have dishes. They'd, no, they'd, they'd, they'd have paper plates, plate. plate. and they'd have no dishwashers. You can't. Well, see, what would happen is if if you're if you're a restaurant and you have to pay all these mandated, the, the price of the food might be so high that nobody will eat there. You know, the problem is to get rid of the minimum wage. The problem is to let the market set wages, yeah. not the government. Yeah, you know, and you got to get rid of a lot of costs. Peter, what you're saying, though, is this. IBM has to hire all legal people to make sure the ones with the, um, the, the visas, whatever, the HB ones, all legal. If they hired illegal people from Lithuania, from um, those countries over there, those software engineers will come over here and work for $12 an hour. Okay, and how would the people in this country, the ones who are engineers, software engineers, how would they like it if all of these illegals came over from all of these countries and were hired by IBM? There'd be a firestorm in Washington. Well, but because why are but if they're if, taking if, American jobs? No, no, no. But see work. that see the arguments that you're making have been made for a hundred years. They made it about the Chinese coming to work on the railroads. I mean, people are always very short-sighted. They say, oh, it's driving down wages. Well, when people's wages go down. That brings prices down for everybody. Every, you know, our, our standard of living grows. You know, if you're saying, let's keep everybody's wages up, okay, so you have high wages, but everything you want to buy costs more. So the real value of your wages is going down. What we need is for companies to hire the best people they can at the most competitive price that they can afford. You know, if you, if, if you, if you're, uh, you know, you get, you get into a car accident and you need some body work, you know, you go to three or four dealers, you pick the one with the lowest price. You don't pick the guy that's going to charge you the most. You, every, whenever you make a decision to employ labor on your own, you find the guy that's going to do it for the least amount of money. 
You shop around. You know, when there's something on sale, you go and buy it. You don't say, wait, 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 wait till I jack up the price. Yeah, I'm going to buy that. You know, you want to buy a sale. Everybody does that. Businesses are no different. And businesses have to try to hire at the best quality at the lowest price so they can keep driving costs and prices down and so that everybody benefits. The cost and price would go down. The illegal alien problem is such a burden on the people in this country tax-wise. We are subsidizing them in medical care, education, well, that, well, well, yes, but I'm against, the, I'm against that stuff. I'm against the government medical subsidies. But it's always a two-edged sword. Look, I used to live out in California. And there are a lot of uh, people in California that have illegal help uh, watching their kids. Now, they, they try to find legal help, but they can't afford it. Nobody will take these jobs at a wage that, 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 that a housewife can afford. But you know what would happen if you kick those illegals out? Those women would have to quit their jobs that they have and stay home and watch their kids. And we would actually lose off on, on, on their productivity. So it's not just a panacea. Right? I, don't want it, I want to make sure that the people that are here are here legally. But if, a lot of people think if we could just get rid of all the illegal immigrants, our problems are going to go away. They might actually get worse. You know, people don't realize a lot of the stuff that is getting done that wouldn't be done at all. Now, what we need to do is get rid of the laws that are doing that. Get rid of the, the, the labor laws and the minimum wage laws so, so that we can have uh, Americans working. There's no reason for us to have so many unemployed Americans yet have to outsource work to other countries. Why can't we let wages fall to a level that Americans can actually work? You know, and if that happens, the standard of living will rise. You know, and people will be produ productively employed. Right now, why would anybody who's unemployed take a job? No one's going to take an $8 an hour job in this country when you can get unemployment for two years. Why not exhaust those benefits? You know, because when, when you have to work, you give up all those unemployment benefits, and then you pay taxes on what you earn. And you give up all the leisure. You know, it's good to not work. You know, it's pretty fun now having to go to the office. That's, you know, so there's a value there. We have to stop subsidizing that and force people into the workforce. Here, I'd like to make, that's an excellent point. I'm in a tree business, and I have a friend of mine has a tree business in Norwalk, Greenwich area. Forty years in the business. He's been trying to find one employee to get into his business with, him, with his other employees. He's got some work and he needs, he needs an, an employee, a good climber, tree climber. He's advertised, he's done everything, and he can't find anybody. And I, I looked him in the eye and I said, Art, why do you think you can't find anybody? And he said to me, because they're on unemployment, getting unemployment benefits for two years, and they don't want to work. And no well fit. Senator, they go out there and work. And you're absolutely right. And you know, also part of the problems for these jobs, I met somebody who was campaigning. It was a young woman, and she had started a business. And she was so happy because she found a way not to have to hire anybody. Because she was able to get all her employees outsourced to India and different places and get stuff done because she didn't want to be an employer in this country because of all the... When you're an employer, they put a target on your back and they vilify you. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of ways you can be sued. There's all kinds of legal risk and life to expose yourself to. Because the minute you're an employer, you're every politician's enemy. And so we've created a situation where people have incentives to figure out how not to hire people. I mean, what kind of crazy country is that? You know, the main reason we have so many illegals is because the process of making them legal is yes, broken. Yes, absolutely. And when they were legal and they had papers and you could hire HB1, they suddenly just cut off the quota in midstream. We had people in Mexico coming back to, they were going to get their papers renewed, cut off, done, you're over. So now you have a situation where you have no one to hire for what you're doing. You can advertise all day long, but the job that you're asking, no one does yeah. that. And if you go back in time to 1880, 1890, 1900, 1910, when they were flooding in by the boatload through Ellis Island, when my grandparents came here, no one lost their job. Just because all these people, we doubled our population, and we had practically no unemployment. You know, and you know, and it didn't matter because all this labor that come, we all benefited from it. it. It made us more productive. It made it, you know, we were getting the best and the brightest that were coming over here. People that wanted to work hard. There's always room. There's there's going to be an unlimited amount of jobs that will be created to accommodate anybody who wants to work.